I'm Justin Mott and welcome to my home in Hanoi, Vietnam. First things first, Happy New Year to all you guys and gals out there and thank you for supporting me and supporting my channel. Today I'm going to talk about five lame excuses that I frequently hear that are holding you back as a photographer. So let's get into it. <laughs> things first, don't forget to check out my online store at justinmott.com where I've got presets starting as low as $4.99 that will not make you a better photographer, but they will add some pop your images. You can see so right here. I've got prints with free shipping starting as low as $99 and I've got my one-on-one -on -one sessions. If you're interested in improving your photography, you can book those sessions or gift them to a friend for as low as $99 for a one-hour one-on-one Zoom session. And speaking of my one-on-one -on -one sessions, that's a great segue to what I want to talk about today which is all the excuses that I hear. I hear them a lot through my one-on-one -on -one sessions, but I've been hearing these excuses for a very long time. I've been teaching workshops for over 10 years, back in my days when I was doing my TV show with Canon. I was doing workshops all around Southeast Asia, even up to this day teaching my Leica master classes. And also on that note, guys, I'm hoping to start to open up my own workshop series here in Vietnam if the world will allow me to do so. For any of you interested in stuff like that, make sure you check out my newsletter that you can subscribe to at justamont.com so you can find out right when I release the workshop so you can book it right away if you're interested. So here are my top five lame excuses that I hear way too often that are holding photographers back. The first one that I hear, and probably this is the one I hear the most often, is that, that you need to travel to take good photographs. You need to go somewhere exotic to get the shots that you really, really want, that you're really passionate about. That's what's holding you back. You haven't gone on that trip to Vietnam or Italy or France or wherever your interest is. You haven't done that trip yet. And that's why you don't have those great pictures. That's why you haven't taken pictures in a long time. And that's, that's just frankly like, BS because if you don't have the interest, you don't have the passion to go shoot in your own backyard, you're probably just not that into photography, to be honest. Like you might kind of like it, but you probably don't have like that full passion for it, or at least that passion for what it takes to be a professional photographer. And, and that's also okay if you're just a hobbyist and just an amateur, that's also fine. But even as amateurs, like don't think that's what's holding you back. That's not the difference between a pro and an amateur that the pro traveled somewhere exotic. And yes, you're gonna say, yeah, but you've traveled all over the place. Yes, I have, but I started in my backyard. I started in San Francisco. I shot everything I could possibly shoot in that city. And when I moved to Vietnam 15 years ago, I shot everything here and I, and I still do. I still go out and shoot. I shoot assignments, I shoot personal work. I shoot in my own backyard. I shoot in Hanoi quite frequently. So if you don't have that passion just to shoot every day where you live, then you probably don't have like that full on passion for photography. Again, it doesn't mean you don't like it, but it, it's definitely not what's holding you back. What you probably need is a project in your own backyard, a project in your neighborhood, a project in your city. And related to that note, I just wanted to also say that, that that's not like why you're not getting good pictures because you haven't gone somewhere exotic. First of all, I can honestly say this, most of the time, even professionals, but all the time when I do portfolio reviews for amateurs, their worst pictures are the shots that they took on that trip, that once in a lifetime trip that they took to Vietnam, that they took to Italy, that they took to France. Sorry, I'm just naming these places because this is what I've seen recently. And they think they're the best. That's the pictures they lead with. That's the pictures they're most proud of. And honestly, to me, they're the most mundane. Their best pictures tend to be shots of their friends that they're most comfortable with, shots in their neighborhood, in their city that they know well, they know the light well, they know the streets well, they know the timing well, they know the neighborhoods well. That's where they take their best shots. Now, it doesn't mean you can't take your best shots on that exotic trip, and it doesn't mean you shouldn't go on that amazing trip. I, I'm a huge advocate of traveling. But when you do go, go with a fresh set of eyes. Don't just go there and just like take the cliche shots that you've seen a million times that other photographers take. And, and I get it, because when you go to these places, you're, you're so excited, it's so new, it's so fresh, it's so different than what you've normally photographed in your backyard. Everything's exciting, the architecture, the people, the colors, the food, everything is. But again, that doesn't mean that that just does the work for you. Just because the person's wearing a different hat, just because, and yes, I take a lot of pictures of people in conical hats, but I do a lot of agricultural stories and things like that as well. But you know, you, you, you let the buildings do the work, you let the colors do the work, you, you get lazy. And that's what I see all the time. They've gone to these exotic locations, they've taken the pictures of the monuments, they've gone to Cuba and taken the pictures of the colorful backgrounds of the old cars, but they're not good pictures, which is just they finally found something that's kind of interesting or what they perceive as more interesting than what's in their backyard. And that's the problem. So 
You don't need to travel to an exotic location to get good pictures. That's not what's holding you back. You need to find a story in your own neighborhood, something that you can go out and shoot consistently, something that gives you time to grow as a photographer, time to make mistakes as a photographer, time to work on your craft as a photographer. And when you do travel, don't forget about all those things that you learned. And when you do travel to that exotic location, don't forget about composition. Don't forget about light. Don't forget about finding a good story. Do some research ahead of time. And when you hit the ground there, spend some time with your subject. Spend some time on your project. Spend some time crafting a story. That will get you good pictures in an exotic location. But you don't need it, and that's not what's holding you back. So start locally. Start in your own backyard. And again, when you do travel, don't take all those cliche shots. Don't go back to the old shots that you've always been doing. Just apply those to a new location. Grow. Develop. Work on it. Craft it. And yes, it's not that easy and it will take time. You might not get like the most, you might not get the best pictures right away, but trust me, over time you will if you just put the time in and you're just patient. And really take a long, hard look at your portfolio because I bet you, I bet you if you've only gone on a couple of trips, I bet those pictures that you think are unbelievable just because your friends rewarded you because they haven't been to those locations, I bet they're not your best pictures. So take a long, hard look in the mirror and at your portfolio. The next excuse I hear photographers make all the time is the weather. They blame everything on the weather. Well, where I live, the weather sucks, or you're an assignment photographer, or you're a commercial photographer, and you shoot with natural light, and you say, well, weather's bad, that's why, and you just kind of chalk it up to that, and you tell the client, well, I couldn't get anything, the weather's bad. Like, I've been in bad situations with the weather, I've pouted about the weather, I've complained about the weather, but I don't let it hold me back, and I don't use that as an excuse to my client. Sure, I might be thinking to myself, in this situation, it would be better if we had a beautiful sunrise, a beautiful sunset, especially in my line of work. I shoot a lot of travel photography, shoot a lot of hotel photography, a lot of resort photography, so it really is light dependent. But don't make that a crutch. Like, you're gonna have days with bad weather. Adapt. You know, in commercial photography, bring lighting. Adapt. Understand how to make it look like it's sunny out. Or if you do commercial photography, make sure that you understand how to do the retouching so it can look real and it can look like you have a good sunset, not fake. Work around it. And in editorial photography, travel photography, I've done so many different assignments to beach towns. I've done, oh, so many in Thailand. I've done a million stories about Koh Samui, about Phuket in Vietnam. I've done, you know, travel stories about Nha Trang, Phu Quoc, Con Dao. And the weather's not always great, but you adapt. You work around it. I don't go back to my editor and say, well, I couldn't get you anything because the weather was crap. They don't want to hear it. You know, good photographer solves problems. They don't complain about the problems. You solve problems. The next excuse is that you need new gear. That's what's holding you back. It's not. The next latest camera isn't holding you back. The next latest lens isn't holding you back. Sure, it's nice to have good gear. Yes, I do have good equipment, but I earned my equipment. I didn't just buy it and then the work came to me. I earned that work and my work pays for that camera equipment before I buy it. I mean, that's how I've worked. I love having new gear. I don't always chase the latest and greatest, but I like having really good stuff, especially for my commercial work because the client will need it if they are going to do a giant poster or a billboard. So I do use a medium format camera in those situations, but you don't need the latest and greatest. That's not what's holding you back. Like There are fantastic photographers out there taking pictures with a camera that's 10 years old or taking pictures with a just entry level camera. It's not that. That's not what's holding you back. Like Sure, yes, like in some situations if you're starting a portrait business or starting a studio business and you don't have like any lighting, sure, you could use some lighting to get good at it. But you don't need the latest. You don't need the greatest. Earn your way up into that field. And, Honestly, like I see people do it all the time. That's what they do during the lulls because photography has so many ups and downs for amateurs and for pros. We go through those times where we're excited and we've got a project coming up or we just shot something we're excited to share or we're on our way on that epic trip. We're going to take cliche pictures. No, we're not. Remember I talked about that. And then you have the downs where you haven't taken, you haven't gone on a trip in a while. You haven't taken any new pictures. You don't, you're stagnant in your personal project. And during those down times, that's where the gear is calling you. That's where it's like, buy me. That's what's gonna save you. It doesn't. It's never It's never saved anyone. Gear doesn't make you go out magically, like wake you up in the morning and say, let's go, let's go take some nice pictures. Sure, you might be excited for a day or two and you might go out and use it, but that excitement's going to wither away. That excitement's just gonna escape. If you don't have the passion, if you don't have the excitement, just already there, the gear's not gonna help. So if you're going through the downtime, find a project. Don't buy new gear. If you're going through a downtime, go out and shoot. Don't buy new gear. If you're going through a downtime, be productive with your business. Focus on something there. Like, but. But really, it's, it's not gonna make you go take nicer pictures. It's not gonna motivate you to go out and take pictures. That has to come from within. The gear, it's short-term happiness. Trust me, it's short-term happiness and long-term debt. So trust me, again, I have nice equipment, but I've earned it. So go out there and earn it. Be happy with what you have right now at the moment. That's not what's stopping you. You're stopping yourself, not the newest camera. 
The next excuse I hear, and this one I hear in my workshops, and it, it always kind of like offends me. It doesn't offend me. It just kind of pisses me off a little bit. When people say, oh, my subject's boring. I'm like, oh, and I followed someone around for a bit, and my subject's boring. I do these workshops where I, I ask people to shadow other people around. I say, find a subject, do a story about them, shadow them around for the day. No matter who you follow around, well, not anyone, but most people, if you shadow them for an entire day, it will be boring at times. You know, there's just going to be times they're not doing anything. I mean, just think of yourself. Like, think if someone was following you around for the day and taking pictures. There's time you might be taking a nap. That's not necessarily a great picture. There's times you're just sitting around reading, making a coffee, or having lunch. Like, there is going to be downtime. Sometimes people aren't as interesting as you might have thought. If you're doing a story, if you're doing an assignment, sure. Even if you're doing a wedding, I find people say that. Like, oh, my subject wasn't that interesting. They didn't really do much. And they weren't, like, that animated. That... That may be the case. Like some people are. I mean, I've shot weddings where people are really animated and the party's crazy and everything's wild and people are picking each other up and drinking and throwing each other in the pool and stuff like that. Awesome. I've also shot weddings where people didn't even have a party. And then later on they thought, like, where are the party pictures? And I'm like, but you didn't party. You had a reception, but no one drank. You had a dance floor and no one danced. Like, oh, oh, yeah, well, it, like that's the level. Like people just don't even realize what happened. But your job as a photographer is to make it interesting. Like, sure, you can't have pictures of people dancing if they didn't dance, but your job is to elevate in those other times of the day, the ceremony, the portraits, all those natural moments. You have to elevate your pictures there. You have to get interesting composition. You have to pay attention to light. You have to be there when these moments happens. If they aren't frequent, you better be ready when they do happen. Because that's it. Like, not having an interesting subject is an excuse, especially in paid photography. You know, if someone hires you to do something, someone hires you to go take a portrait and you come back and you say, well, the guy wasn't that interesting, the guy wasn't that interesting. Well, it's a portrait. You're supposed to make them look interesting. You're supposed to find that connection. You're supposed to put the time in to get that expression out of them that you want. You don't just settle and say, well, they were boring or they weren't fun. Like, yes, there are extreme cases where people just aren't gonna be cooperative, sure. But but your job as a photographer is, is to make it interesting. Whatever your subject is, whether it be a person, whether it be a story, whether it be an assignment, whether it be even just a plate of food, make it interesting. You know, if I'm supposed to photograph this pen, say, well, it's boring. But yeah, you can make it interesting. That's what we do with stuff. We have a lot of tools to do so. We have, we have lighting. We have, we have lighting. We have different lenses. We have different compositions. We have different colors and different backgrounds. There's all sorts of ways to make things that you might find boring more interesting. And if something's boring on a personal project, then yeah, maybe you move on. Don't just move on because there's a couple boring times throughout the day. Like, not every moment's going to be interesting. Your job as a photographer is to make it interesting. Your job as a photographer is to be creative. Your job as a photographer is to solve these problems. The next and last excuse I hear from photographers all the time is blaming the client. And yes, I am surely guilty of this one as well. You know, I even have whole episodes about it where I'm complaining about clients. But I complain about clients, but it's not an excuse. It's not an excuse to take bad pictures, and you can vent, and you can complain, and that's good. Get it out there, but it's still, it's not an excuse not to do a good job. Once you take on the assignment, once you take on the client, whether it be a wedding shoot, a travel story that maybe you don't think is that interesting, or a portrait shoot and the person's not that interesting, once you take on that assignment, it, it, it's yours. You gotta own it. Once you accept the money, once you accept the assignment, once you book that in your schedule, you're no longer too good for it. You do the assignment. And yes, sometimes you don't know until you get there how unreasonable the client could be, but don't play the blame game. Like, like have a talk with people. A lot of times people are don't know what they're talking about and they put that out there and you get frustrated and you say, well, why did they tell me how to take this picture? This isn't what I do in my portfolio. That's not how I got the shots in my portfolio. I do this process. They want me to do this process. If I do their process, I can't deliver the images that they hired me to deliver. So that's a problem. So, so voice it. In those situations, Voice it, have a talk, get it out there. Like it's BS, I see so many people, they get lazy about it. Well, they get frustrated and I understand the frustration, I feel it. They get frustrated and they say, forget it, fine, I'm just gonna do what they said and they deliver crap and they never voice their opinion and then they, the client's not happy and the client's not happy but they say, well, hey, that's what you wanted. And it's, it's an easy road to go on and it's a slippery slope to play because you can start playing that but you're not gonna be happy with yourself, they're not gonna be happy with the work, it's not good for your business, nobody wins. When a client is unreasonable or the job is unreasonable but you took it on, still give your best, still be creative and if they're, limited, and if they're limiting your creativity or sending you down a path that's not what you normally do, voice it and talk about it. And if they still don't hear it after you voice it, like talk to their boss and get it out there. And then also don't just get it out there verbally, get it out there in writing because people always forget those conversations you had. You know, you say, I think we should photograph the room this way. I think we should photograph the model over there. And they say, no, we should do it over here. But you know, you're the photographer. You know the light's better over there. You know the background's better over there. You know you can get a more interesting composition over there. They don't know. I fight for what I believe in, even in my commercial photography. I fight for what I know. I fight for the best product. I don't fight for my ego. I fight to deliver the best product to them. Now, I know that's hard because ego will get in the way. I never use the client as an excuse 
ever. I just don't. Like, it's not an excuse to deliver bad pictures. It's not an excuse to not do your best. No one wants to hear it in the end. Like, the client or their boss or even them themselves, they're not going to overhear it. Like, well, you did this. No one's going to take the blame. So, so do your best. Fight for what's right. Fight for what you believe in. Fight for the process that you know works for you to deliver the images that you were hired to do. So that's it for today, guys. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to check out, again, my online store at justinmott.com. Happy holidays and happy new year to all of you guys and gals out there. Thank you for tuning into my channel. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Don't forget to have a wonderful day.